Brother Jim reporting here. Breaking news, Jesse Smollett has been indicted on 16 felony accounts by a grand jury. Justice is coming to America. Thanks to Donald Trump, a Cook County grand jury returned a 16 count indictment against Jesse Smollett according to court records. According to the Cook County State's Attorney Office, the indictment was returned by the grand jury on Thursday, reported ABC7 Chicago. Jesse Smollett was originally hit with one felony count of disorderly conduct for filing a false police report on February 20th. According to court records, the grand jury returned two separate sets of charges, one related to what Jesse Smollett told police officers about the fake attack, including his claims he was attacked by two white males screaming homophobic and racial slurs at him while they poured bleach on him and put a noose around his neck. Let's not forget, he said they were making America great again. Trump supporters with MAGA hats on. The other charges are related to a subsequent interview Jesse Smollett had with police. The new charges each carry a possibility of probation for up to four years. It is highly unlikely Jesse Smollett will serve time in prison. Experts say he will likely strike a plea deal and skate. Smollett was taken into custody but posted a $100,000 bond on the same day, which is about $10,000. Uh, the truth about the hate hoax eventually bubbled up and revealed that Jesse Smollett paid two Nigerian brothers $3,500 to carry out the hoax. Smollett is also behind the threatening letter that was sent to the Empire Studio in Chicago. The letter is still with the FBI at a crime lab for analysis. Smollett could face federal charges for lying to the feds about that fake letter as well. Despite all of this evidence, Jesse Smollett maintains he's innocent of the charges. It's what liberals do. We're always innocent. It doesn't matter how much evidence, what video you have on us, just like the guy in Berkeley who attacked the conservative make a uh, Trump supporter. He pled guilty as well, even though there was a plain to see video of him beating up. Uh, I think his name was Michael Hayden. I'm not sure. And then he reports to court with an in, uh, pleading innocent, not guilty. Another fake attack in Chicago. This incident is now determined to be unfounded and it did not occur as it was reported to police. Fake news dies in sunlight. There's been another fake incident in Chicago. They're just pouring out there recently. Early reports indicated a 23-year-old college student was mugged and stabbed in downtown's Grant Park after encountering a robber at Grant Park, police said. The student said she was walking east at 9.50 p.m. on the first block of East Ida B. Wells Drive when a man snuck up on her from behind and demanded money, according to Chicago police and a Columbia College crime alert. So what's happening? There's all kinds of people being shot day in and day out and every day almost in Chicago. Now all of a sudden we want to fake hoax crimes that are no one even dies uh, because it's about money. It's fun to make up lies so you can make some money. She said she wasn't carrying cash and gave him her debit card instead, authorities said. The robber took the card and stabbed her before running toward the lake. The 23-year-old went to a convenience store in the 500 block of South State to seek help, police said. You go to a convenience store, you don't go to hospitals. <laughs> she was taken to Northwestern Memorial Hospital with three puncture wounds to the lower abdomen. A 23-year-old Columbia College student was stabbed Wednesday night after encountering a robber at Grant Park, police said. Hmm, this one definitely doesn't sound the same at all. Based on a review of video evidence, this incident is now determined to be unfounded and it did not occur as it was reported to police. At least this time it didn't blow up into a fake new social media terror attack on Trump supporters. Amen to that. Another day, another cry bully tantrum at Portland State University. Just two days after Bell Boy disrupted a presentation at Portland State University, the college is now dealing with an unruly mob. 
that seemingly hijacked a college board meeting that centered around having armed police officers on campus. Most of the activist attendees in the crowd who apparently have no jobs and no schoolwork to tend to have been very vocal about disarming campus police. During public testimony, one student, Leslie Guerrera, spoke up in favor of having armed police officers. Take a guess as to what the crazed activist did next. go the Portland Antifa activists that are no longer on the streets beating up people got their ladies in the in the uh, school board meeting doing their job there you know like a Rashida Talab yeah they're all brainwashed what did the board of trustees and campus security do about this tantrum disarm the police we want a wild riot they practiced their butt sitting and selective disregardation skills by allowing the mob to shout down and intimidate the student, effectively preventing her from being able to speak her mind. They even physically took the microphone and took her notes away from her. The mob was led by student activist Olivia Pace, who has been involved in several disruptions and protests on campus over the past few years, even targeting LGBT students. Also testifying against armed police was Andre Washington, the brother of Jason Washington, who was shot and killed by campus officers last summer in the middle of a street brawl. Andre is the one in the white shirt getting in Guerrero's face and literally taking the microphone. Portland State University Board of Trustees held a special meeting Thursday to discuss the findings from a recent campus safety report. The, newly, the new report was written in response to the shooting death of Jason Washington, who was killed by Portland State University police after they responded to a bar fight in June of last year. At Thursday's meeting, the board first heard from the consultants who made the report and compiled a list of recommendations for the college. University of Cincinnati, Ryan McMillan, Ryan McMillan, University of North Texas, University of North Texas. I am so glad I don't live there. You know, it's amazing that you have all these leftist uh, Jesuit trained college students that are walking around hating on police and they don't want no police to be armed. They wanted to be just like the UK. If they only went to the UK for a little bit and, and got their heads chopped off and realized what's really happening over there. But, you know, that's what the Jesuit curriculum does in the schools. It destroys. Anyway, um, let's see. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 1. In the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edo, the prophet, saying, The Lord hath been sore displeased with your fathers. Therefore say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings. But they did not hear, nor hearken unto me, saith the Lord. Sounds like what we just watched. 
They don't care about God. They don't even know God. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? But my words and my statutes, which I have commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? And they returned and said, like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us according to our ways and according to our doings, so hath he dealt with us. Thank you. Let me be serious with you. I would rather that you donate to my ministry directly. I cannot survive financially to keep this ministry and new service going without your help. And we all know their plans to shut me down again. But many of you would like to receive a gift or product as a token of my appreciation. And I don't blame you. Isn't it about time Uncle Sam started paying you instead of you paying him? It is about time. The federal government pays you your rent check. The government rents out thousands of buildings instead of uh, buying them every year. This is all funded by the current $11.1 billion building fund in our budget. Get your free federal rent check today sign up with the federal millionaire information here down below become a shareholder to receive federal rent checks for life by making a one-time investment as a shareholder an IRS ruling declares this to be totally legal this is no joke no scam and been for many years the longer your name is on the distribution list the larger your federal rent check grows as inflation rises along with real estate the government pays you more every year. Starting out as little as $1,800 a month would be your rent check. Wouldn't that be nice to receive every month a rent check like that? The federal government continues to raise your income as inflation rises. This puts an end to retiring with a fixed income that leaves you going broke as you get older. This will put a major dent in those people who hate their home taxes going up every year, wouldn't it? And folks, the price for this valuable information will cost you only $39 a year or $79 for a two-year membership. Sign up today.